Bibles and come with me to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. We have two passages of scripture, two particular uh, chapters we want to cover. Short, short though, not long. I'm going to say what God's saying, sit down. It ain't going to take me long. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And then Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 14 and 16. Acts chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, and then Acts chapter 2, verses 14 and 16. When you have it, just respond by saying amen. Amen. And I thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. Acts chapter 1, 13, and it reads on this wise. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These were all, these all continued <clears throat> with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your presence. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love and kindness, because it's better than life unto us. Father, we thank you for the approach and opportunity to come boldly, hallelujah, to the throne of grace. And we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Father, as we come, God, let me decrease that you may increase. Father, get the glory today. Let somebody say yes to your will and yes to your way. Let somebody surrender their heart to you. And Father, while you're working on them, Father, help us to become more acquainted with who you are. And Father, draw us nearer unto you. And while you're doing these things, we'll be careful to give your name great glory, great honor, and great praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and the house said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> amen. And for a subject, I want to say to you, empowered to cause a shift. Empowered to cause a shift. Or for a subtopic, we can say walking in the afterlife. Hmm. Walking in the afterlife. On Saturday, March 21st, 2020, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo issued Executive Order Number 202.8. This executive order stated that requiring all non essential employees to stay home. Effective at 8 p.m. Sunday, March 22nd, 2020 through April 19th, 2020. Any business not in compliance with the order is subject to civil fines and mandatory closures. There will also be restrictions placed on civilians through specific enforcement measures for those provisions, <clears throat> for those provisions have not been specified. So on March 21st, the world that we knew shifted and totally went upside down and inside out. Every area of the world was now shut down. 
what we would normally do, go to work, go to school, go to church, go out for recreation, go out to dinner, just hang out with friends. All of that had now ceased. And it wasn't by choice. It wasn't something that we ourselves had decided that we wanted to do. It came as a mandate from our state officials. It wasn't just New York that was under this mandate. It was New Jersey, it was Connecticut, it was Pennsylvania, it was all the states, and it started traveling across the country. In fact, it came up the coast, and it came from China, and it came from different areas of the world, and it started spreading to the point where everything had to be shut down. Amen. And, and, and when this thing started, everybody was saying, well, it can't be too long. We even see in the order that they thought by March or by April or so, we would be back to some type of normal. Amen. We would be back to some place where we can get back. Maybe this thing that has shut the world down or just passed right on over. We, we won't amen, have too many effects from it. We, we won't be too bothered by it. I mean, it, it shut us down for 30 days, you know, 30 days we can bounce back and we can get back to where we was and, and, and do this thing, amen. But, 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 no, 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 April 19th came and, and the, ex the order got extended and then June came and May came and the order got extended and then July and then August came and, and they said, no, you know, maybe we thought, oh, the summer's here, you know, it's hot now and Maybe this thing will cool down and we can do something different. But no, 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 that's, that's not what happened. In fact, today, June 6, 2021, we are still where we, we were seemingly under this executive order. And while some things have lifted, some things are starting to change, some things are starting to become to a point where we are calling it back to normal, amen, um, it's not like it was before. Amen. It's nothing like life was before. Everything, even, even while Pastor Neil was ministering on giving, amen, I reached in my pocketbook to pull out an offering, and then it slapped me in my face that that's not how we do offering anymore. Amen. We, we pick up our phones. That phone that you told them, kids, don't you bring that in church, because that ain't no place for church is now the norm. It is actually how we do church, amen, because now the world has shifted and gone into another place, amen. But I want to submit a thought to you this morning, amen. What the world known as a national, an international pandemic is not new. <laughs> this is not the first time the world has seen a pandemic. Maybe it's the first time you experienced a pandemic, but this is not the first time that the world has experienced a pandemic. Pandemic. Sister Nika, what are you talking about? Let's walk to Genesis. In Genesis, amen, Noah built something that was called the ark. Amen. God told Noah, Noah, it's going to rain. Noah built an ark, it's going to rain. Nobody never seen rain. Never knew what rain was. Noah didn't know. He didn't even know what an ark was. God said, get you some gopher wood. He gave him the cubits, the heights, the breadths, the depths, the windows, the doors, the floors. Gave him all the specifications. And for 120 years or so, Noah's building something he never seen. Oh, my God. But, but, but he kept building. And one day, God said, Noah, get you this kind of animal, your eight members of your family. I'm speeding through it. And get in this ark and shut the door. <laughs> Pandemic. Um, 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 quarantine, if you will, number one. So the pandemic, the quarantine, shutting you out is not a new thing to God. Hallelujah. He shut the world down from the beginning. Hallelujah. So this is not a new thing. Amen. And then, and then, and then we get to the book of Acts. I'm just jumping real quick. Hallelujah. And he said before he ascended, hallelujah, from heaven, he blessed them. Then he said, go and wait until I endue you with power from on high. Go in an upper room. Pandemic. Shut down quarantine Lord have mercy and it was about a hundred and twenty of them in this room hallelujah shut out from the world couldn't go to work couldn't go to school couldn't go to temple they couldn't do what they normally used to do but they was in there just to wait and waiting for what 
the Bible says that Jesus said I'm going to give you some power they never knew what this power looked like they don't know what Jesus is talking about hallelujah what kind of power I mean we walked with him these three years we seen him feed the sick raise the dead what can he do more than that I mean we saw it what else you know he said he gonna come back we just gonna wait till he come get us I mean what is he talking about no but he see you know he was that kind of strange though he sent us to a room shut the door and tell us don't come out don't go back out into the into the world because I got to give you something before I send you back out oh my god when this pandemic started the first words out of my mouth is that when I come out of this I will not be the same person when I come out of this I'm going to be powerful when I come out of this I'm going to be better when I come out of this when I come out of this, I'm not going to be the person that went in. And I decree and declare to you, before this pandemic was even where we are now, I said God start elevating, he start shifting, changing, and moving. So they were in this pandemic. They were in this upper room. And they're sitting there waiting the bible said they didn't just sit they were praying they were on one accord says the word they was handling business it was 11 of the apostles the disciples that went in they started they realized that judas killed himself they cast lots they added matthias the mother of Jesus was in there. So they just wasn't wasting time while they were shut in. <laughs> We're going to know what you've been doing for the last 441 days. I don't care what your mouth say. I, I know if you've been with God. I know if in the shutdown, in the shutting, in the pandemic, I know if you've been seeking the mind of the Lord. I know, hallelujah, if you've been really walking and talking with God. I know if you use this time wisely. I'm going to know. We are going to know. How you going to know, Sister Nika? Well, if you look at Acts chapter 2, hallelujah, that we read, it says when Peter came out, whoosh, it says, but Peter standing with the 11, hallelujah, lifted up his voice. Now, when Peter went in, this was the Peter that did not hear Woo, that denied Jesus. This is the Peter that cursed. Cursing Peter, cutting people's ears off. Thugged out Peter, went in to the quarantine. Lord, have mercy. He went in, hallelujah, during the pandemic one way. But when Peter came out, Peter stood up with the 11. Hallelujah, after he got endued with power from on high and he began preaching hallelujah to the Medes and the Persians hallelujah Peter was speaking in tongues hallelujah declaring the works of the Lord Peter was telling them how powerful God is and then he stepped out and what did Peter say he said he lifted up and said, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Because they thought they were drunk. Notice that Peter didn't say that they weren't drunk. He said they are not drunk, as ye suppose. Hallelujah. Yeah, we drunk, but we ain't drunk like you think. Because this is but the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. He said, but this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. I will what? Pour. Oh, God. I said, God, start pouring. Hallelujah. Pouring his spirit. And they start drinking the spirit of the living God. And because they were drinking, they got drunk off of Jesus. And when they got drunk, guess what they did? They came out in Empowered to hallelujah grow the church. Hallelujah. 
What kind of power are you working with? Baby, I've been shut in, but I wasn't shut out. I'm telling you right now, the devil messed up. He should have got us before. <laughs> he should have got us when we was down. That fool closed the door on us. He don't know that Jesus, when he shut the door, he said, Jesus said, I am the door. All you did was back us up into a corner with a powerful one. All you did was close us in with the Holy One of Israel. All you did was shut us down so we could spread out. Peter preached his inaugural sermon as the church was birthed. Hallelujah. And Pastor Peter stood up. He started preaching. He said, but this is that. He said he, now he had that power. When he went in, he was a thug. When he went in, he was an ear cutter. When he went in, he was a cursor. But when he came out, he was a bishop. When he came out, he was a pastor. When he came out, he was evangelizing. When he came out, he was growing the church. I said, what you coming out with? The pandemic wasn't to kill you. It was to empower you to be greater. It was to empower you to walk in a new life. It was to empower you to shift the atmosphere and start changing stuff. Whenever God is getting ready to do something great, the first thing he's doing is shut it down. Check out the word. When Noah came back, it was a whole new world. When you go back it's a new world. You can't do what you did before. Let me tell you something. This whole pandemic, I've been working with people, they've been getting the Holy Ghost on Zoom. It ain't no joke. On Zoom. I have never preached and taught so much. Me and Elder, Tag teaming. He on one computer, I'm on one. Then we got to stop, shut it down, and come together. Listen, this is not the time. We're not going back to where we was. We're going forward to the new, a new way. The pandemic was the preparation for you to be where God wants you to be. Because after this, after Peter preached this, Acts chapter 2 says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, oh Lord, he reenacted. He reenacted what they did in the upper room. They were all in one accord in one place, right? And then suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. What did it sound like? A rushing mighty wind. What did the sound do? It filled all the house where they were sitting. Hold up. What do you mean the house where they were sitting? <laughs> they were sitting in the house. Did it fill the house? No. They became the house of the living God. Hallelujah. It filled all the house where they were sitting and then it appeared unto them like cloven tongues like as a fire and the fire sat upon each of them and when the fire touched them guess what they did they all began to speak with other tongues as the spirit of God gave utterance you better know that scripture because they getting ready to tell you you don't need to speak in tongues you don't need that that's not true you better be flat footed and firm the Bible says you need the tongue talking Holy Ghost you need to speak in other the Bible says you need the baptism in Jesus name don't tell me you don't need it. This time was to fortify you in your stance with Christ. This time was to strengthen you to understand that we can ready to go into a warfare you never seen before. All this praying and fasting is not for naught, Pastor. I said we're sinning up our timber. I said because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't fight with guns and staves, but they are mighty. And what are those weapons? I said fasting, I said praying, 
I said picking up the word of God and cutting the devil with it. I said this is the season. I'm not the same person that went in the pandemic. <clears throat> oh, I've been created. I've been made new. He said, behold, I do a new thing. And it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? He asked you, do you recognize what I'm doing? The Lord tapped me on the shoulder and said, daughter, new doesn't always mean good. I said, wow. Huh? Huh? <laughs> he ever talked to you and he just tilt your whole brain he said because new things causes change it's going to require a shift and most of the time you don't want to change that's why we don't recognize it because that it don't look like what we want it to look like but Peter said I don't care when he came out Peter stood up and the 11 with him they had, listen, they were so powerful. The 3,000 souls that was lost back in Genesis was added back in one day. One day. What have you been doing in the pandemic? What have you been doing in quarantine? How have you been preparing for this new shift that we get ready to go in? I'm telling you right now, you better enjoy the, enjoy the spread out, huh? Every, every seat in here. I'm telling you now, every seat in here, God has given the church. He said, <clears throat> I'm saying this and then I'm done. He said to me, I kept saying, Lord, this pandemic is crazy. You got to come. He said, I ain't coming yet. I said, why? We tired. I want to go. He said, what did I say when I'm coming? I said, every ear. He said, every ear hasn't heard yet. He said to me, start looking for ears. I'll be walking up to people looking at their ears. Because I want to know, did that ear hear? You want Jesus to come start, event start evangelizing and telling people about him. He said, not when they accept me. Jake just got to hear. The choice is up to them. So you know what I did to speed up my coming? When they shut the doors down, I put y'all on social media and out through the airway so more ears can hear so I could come. Look for ears. Get on your job. Some of you, God, been telling you for the longest. Tell people about me. I want to use you. I've been calling you to ministry. I've been calling you to do great things. And you've been running from God. You've been running from what God said. You won't open your mouth. You won't talk on your job. So when he shut your job down and then you didn't have one, now you wish you could tell everybody. Now you, he had to put the fire up under you to get you to obey what God said. Oh, this pandemic. And guess what? He ain't even, he's not even finished. Saints, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what he's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. If he did all of this in a pandemic, what is he going to do when we really come out? I'm expecting 3,000 souls every day he could do it. I'm expecting to go to the hospital with people on ventilators and tell them, you get up out of that bed in the name of Jesus. You start breathing right now. I'm telling you, I'm expecting to look at somebody that's dead. And I said, by the blood of Jesus and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you get up out of that grave and you walk in Jesus' name. God didn't take me through for nothing. He didn't die on Calvary for nothing. He told me greater works than these shall I do. And I got an expectation and I'm going to do it. Saints of God, I'm done. Hallelujah. You ought to be excited. You ought to be ready. Because it's getting ready to be. You, they don't even know. They talking about New World Order. They don't even know what they talking about. It's not about church, it's about kingdom. We taking every system. Right now, it's an aggressive takeover. 
they better get ready. They have no idea. No idea. They shouldn't have never shut us down. Woo, that was the wrong move for them. Everybody knows, sire. Go on and keep locking me in. Go on and keep shutting me out. Go on and reject me. Everybody know, sire. Go on and do what you got to do. Because all you doing is fortifying. All you doing is preparing. All you doing is getting me ready. Whoosh. Saints of God, I just want to submit to you. If you don't know this Jesus that empowers, if you don't know him in a pardon of your sin, if I was you, I would get to know him today. I wouldn't turn off my phone. I wouldn't turn off YouTube. I wouldn't leave this building if I didn't have a personal relationship with him. <clears throat> I would make sure. The one thing the souls kept telling me pastor when they was getting the Holy Ghost was I never seen nothing like this you think Jesus is coming they were scared I said yup he is you better get ready when he coming I don't know but if I was you I'd make sure I'm ready whenever he just get ready you think he gonna let me in only if you ready don't work listen we ain't got no church to we ain't nobody looking at you you might as well get the Holy Ghost right in your living room and how much Woo, opportunity. Saints, I submit to you, if there's anybody that needs the tongue-talking Holy Ghost, you come on now. He pouring it now. He just pouring. As you walk up here, you'll just start speaking in tongues. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. God is ready. You know why? Because he knows. And he don't want you to miss his coming. He don't want you to miss his coming. Wherever you are in your seat, if you just want prayer, just raise your hand. I don't know what the protocol is. I'm not sure how we work the altar. But if you need prayer, just raise your hand and I'm going to say a general prayer because we want to be respectful of the protocols. Amen. Just raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you for these souls, oh God. Father, we thank you for the pandemic and the quarantine. Father, we thank you that we were shut in but not shut out. Father, we thank you that the way we went in, we not coming out, depending on what we did. Father, I thank you that the days that are left in this pandemic, you can do great things. Father, for 441 days, we've been shut down from the world, but not shut out to you. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, Father, I ask that you fortify somebody today. I ask that you strengthen them in their walk with you today. Father, I ask that you speak explicitly to their spirit today. Father, I ask that you anoint them afresh. Father, I ask that you open up their understanding and give them a new way to think about you, what you do, and how you do it. Father, we thank you in advance for these souls, oh God, being restored and rekindled in the bowels of your mercy. And Father, we thank you for the woman of God. Lord, we thank you for touching her body right now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus. She got too much work to do. To be sick. So Father, I ask that you raise her up. And Father, I ask that you begin to minister to her right where she is. Lord, give her another vision. I say another building to start another work. God, you raise her up. There's too much in her. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for what she's getting ready to do. Father, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do in her life. I see the add-ons. I touch and agree. Oh, God. Yes, God. And I give your name great praise, great glory, and great honor as I commit it in your hands and lay it at your feet. Believe in you for total victory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the house said amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Pastor, when Elder and I were leaving this morning, the Lord told us each to sow a Pentecostal uh, offering. So we're sowing, anybody that wanna join us, the elder and I are believing God for total healing. Total healing. The enemy, during the pandemic, I had two surgeries. Sick, still fighting, but I believe God, I'm already healed, as is the elder. We are healed. And we, because we believe it, we're putting action with our faith. We're sowing into this ministry a Pentecostal offering. So anybody that wants to join us, I know you already gave, but what the pandemic taught me is that you can't outgive God. You can't do it. 
So realizing that we do have different protocols and the way we give, um, I'm just letting you know. I'm inviting anybody that's on Facebook, YouTube, however we're viewing, if you would like to sow into this ministry, Pentecostal offering, give LaFi, check out the website. There are many ways to give, but God is pouring out right now. He's pouring out anointing. He's pouring out healing. He's pouring out blessing. He's pouring out power. He's pouring out gifts. He's pouring out things you've been asking him for. And I believe that it's important to sow into that. Amen. God had to deal with me during the pandemic and teach me about that. And I'm telling you, the things that God have done during this pandemic alone, me and Elder didn't know each other in 2020, in January. We talked in February, and by September we were married. I'm talking about in the pandemic. Pastor, I wanted to always get married at a place. It's a Victorian manor. It's a, a mansion. I said, one, I used to perform many weddings there. I said, when I get married, I'm getting married here. It cost to have a wedding for our guest list about 200, anywhere from 10 to 20,000. Pastor, we got the place for $990. I'm talking about in a pandemic. In a pandemic. In a pandemic. God is doing it. He's doing it. Elevation on the job. Elevation in, 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 in a sorority. Elevation even in education. God has been doing great things. So I'm sowing into this ministry because I believe in this ministry. We thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We give you glory and honor and praise. And before we dismiss, in Peter's message, he said in Acts 2.21, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved and one of the things that she said in her conclusion is don't you want to be ready don't you want to be ready when Jesus comes don't you want to be ready when this life is over it begins with repenting and believing in the one who is and is to come, which is Christ Jesus. Don't you want to be ready? If you want to be ready, it begins in and through the name of Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess and declare that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I confess you as my Lord and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins but arose again from the dead. I now in your name Lord Jesus repent of my sins. Come into my heart and I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And for those who have prayed that prayer, calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved, we pray even right now that the Holy Spirit meets you where you are in and through the mighty name of Jesus. We command that every chain be broken, every fetters of iron shattered. We decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, every yoke and every type and form of bondage to be destroyed from off of you in the mighty name of Jesus and we even declare healing and deliverance to be your portion today be not only set free
be made free in and through the mighty name of Jesus. And wherever you are, we decree that the Holy Spirit of the living God meets you where you are. We command that you are sanctified. We decree and declare that out of your belly, as the scripture says, shall flow rivers of living water. We command in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, receive ye the Holy Ghost in and through the mighty name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree new direction for you, new beginnings for you, new horizons for you. And if there's any sickness or illness or diseases, we decree healing and wholeness be your portion in and through the mighty name of Jesus. And we put our hands together because the Lord has given us his name that is above every other name. We put our hands together because he has given us his Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that he's mighty to save, mighty to heal, and mighty to deliver in and through the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen.